Hello everyone, this is Homer White, and I'm here to give you a little bit of an introduction to your first major assignment in the class involving our Markdown documents. This introduction will occur in two parts. In the first part for this particular video, you're going to learn first how a small data analysis report should look what its structure should be, what kind of sections it should have, what kind of information you want to give to the reader. In a separate video, we'll discuss how you could construct such a report uh, from an R Markdown source document. So, first of all, let's find an example of a good data analysis report similar to the kind of data analysis project that you're going to undertake in this assignment. To find it, you're going to need to go to the common folder where we keep all of our uh, resources for this course. So if you would simply go over to the dot 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 ellipses area of the files pane, click on it, and then type forward slash MAT111 and then press OK, you get inside our common course folder you'll want to look for the things that are particularly my things. So you'll want to go into Dr. White stuff and go to the assignments folder that's particular for your class. And we see the actual homework assignment, but we won't look at that right now. We're going to focus more on the example homework similar to the assignment that you actually have. It comes in two forms, an R Markdown document and in a Word document. We'll focus on the Word document in this video. So what I'm going to do is click on the Word document. And there'll be some kind of offer to download the document. It depends on your computer system what will exact, happen at this point. You may get a direct download offer or you may get an attempt to open up the document directly. And in that case, if you don't see the document, check to see whether you have pop-ups blocked um, in that particular browser and allow pop-ups from the rstudio.georgetowncollege.edu website. I've got a download offer here, and I'll just go ahead and open the file with Microsoft Word. I'm on a Windows system and Word is installed. Okay, if I wanted to modify the file, I could enable editing, but I don't really care to do so. We just want to look at the file itself. So my assignment to you before you go on in the video is to pause it and to try to reproduce these steps, finding the document, look at it, and read it over. Once you've read it over once, come back and pick up this video where you left off. Bye-bye for now. Hello, welcome back. So let's go over the particular parts of this data analysis report. So notice that it has a good descriptive title, it has your own name, and it has the date of the report. A standard data analysis report comes in four sections. There will be an introduction section, a methods section, a results section, which may be subdivided according to the type of results. In this case, we have some graphical results and then another subsection for numerical results. And finally, a small discussion and conclusion section. Let's talk about the significance of each of these sections. So as far as introduction, the introduction introduces the reader to the problem at hand, the research question at hand, and the data set that has been constructed through the collection of data to investigate that research question. So in this case, here's an informal statement of the research question. Can you predict the age of a lion by examining one or more of its physical procedures? And then an introduction to the data frame that contains the data that will investigate that question. It's the data frame Lion Noses, which is from the ABD package. 
Here's a reminder to the reader. We're presuming that the reader uh, knows some R is and interested in following along a little bit with us here. A reminder to the reader how you could take a look at the Lion Noses data frame and also look at the help file for it. As you learn from reading the help file, you'll find that there were 32 lions in the study, and the ages of these lions were known. Perhaps they were lions in a zoo. And for each lion, researchers simply um, looked at the nose of the lion and recorded the proportion of the nose that was black. Their research question more formally then is what's the relationship, if any, between the age of a lion and the proportion of its nose that is black? So at this point, we've introduced the problem to the reader and the data that will analyze the problem. That's our introductory session. Now on to methods. The method section specifies what kinds of analysis methods you're going to use to try to answer your research question. Usually, at this point in the course, there are two types of methods. There are going to be graphical methods and there are going to be numerical methods. And I'm going to require that you choose at least one good gra graphical method for analyzing your question and at least one good numerical method for answering your question. But what methods do you choose? We've learned lots of graphical and numerical descriptive statistical methods by this point in the course. Well, if you've been following along well with the course, you know that it all comes down to what we call variable analysis. That is, you need to identify the variables that are of interest in your research question, figure out what those variables are in the data frame, and then see what's the nature of each of the variables. The two variables involved in this research question were the age of the lion and the proportion of its nose that's black. And when you look inside the data frame, you see that age of lion is given by the variable age, and the proportion of its nose that is black is given by the variable proportion.black. Both of these variables are numerical variables. If we're studying the relationship between two numerical variables, then we know a lot about what methods will be appropriate. Graphical method for that could be making a scatter plot. So notice that in the method section, we talk about the fact that we're going to make a scatter plot to examine the relationship. We even go so far as to hint at what code we might use. That's not strictly necessary, but it's done here. We also talk about what numerical approach we're going to use to study the relationship. And we know that that will be uh, done with a linear model when we're studying the relationship between two numerical variables. So we'll use the LMGC function for that. So we've got our reader queued in to what methods we're going to use now it's time to employ the methods. Employing the methods is what you do in the results section of a data analysis report. At this point in the course, the results section should have two parts. You should have a subsection for graphical results and a subsection for numerical results later on. Let's start with the graphical results. So notice that the author here is letting the reader know what's going to come next a scatter plot of age versus proportion of the nose that is black. Because we presume the audience knows some R and is interested in figuring out how the scatter plot was made, the code that produces the scatter plot is actually shown to the reader. And then after it comes the scatter plot itself. So notice we have a rising cloud of points indicating a positive relationship between uh, proportion.black and age. And a regression line has been included. It looks like the uh, points more or less follow, align reasonably well. So we've got a positive linear relationship here between these two variables. And notice there's discussion of that in the paragraph following. So after you sow someone a plot, you need to talk to the reader about what that plot is telling you about the research question. On to the numerical results. Again, a short sentence or fragment of a sentence telling the reader what's coming up. So the linear model is coming up. Here's the code that produces the linear model along with the output of the linear model itself. After it, we do our discussion. 
So we need to say what all those numbers in the model are telling us relevant to our research question. So notice in this case, there's a discussion of uh, the correlation coefficient and what it means concerning the relationship between the two variables. There's a discussion of the R squared number and what it's telling us. The regression line is given in the output. Here's the equation for the regression line. And the next paragraph discusses the slope of the regression line and gives the reader an interpretation of that slope. Since we have a regression line, we could use it to make predictions of y variables off of x variables. And so as an example to the reader, we're sort of throwing this in for the reader's benefit, we predict the, uh, we use the, the linear model to predict the age of a lion whose nose is 50% black. So following stuff from course notes, we just use the predict function on the lion model with the x value of the x variable being 0.5 and we get a prediction that the lion is 6.2 years old. Of course the prediction is just a prediction. Uh, how far off might it be? The residual standard error gives you the give or take figure. Your prediction could easily be off by about 1.67 years or so. So it's not a terribly accurate prediction. Finally, a discussion and conclusion. So we have indeed discovered that the relationship between nose blackness and age in lions is a positive linear one. Informally, that means the blacker your nose, the older you're liable to be, if you're a lion, that is. But it's also good to add to that conclusion some discussions that help orient the reader to the real significance of your results. When you find two variables are related, you often want to know if one of them might cause the other. It's a good idea here to warn the reader that your results don't mean that the explanatory variable nose blackness causes age. In fact, probably it's the other way around. Probably aging causes changes in the coloration of the lion's nose, just as aging in humans causes colorations in, let's say, our hair. So that discussion is thrown on. And we have the four parts of a data analysis report. As we learn more statistical techniques, data analysis reports will become a little bit more complicated uh, in the methods and in the results section, but they will continue to have the same basic four-part structure, introduction, methods, results, and conclusion. Thank you for listening.